So we have this info. You can see that it's pretty much a summary of um, the columns. We have ID, address, city, state, da 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 da, all the way up to estimated value. And then you can see this is a number of values saved in each column or each feature. Right, so you can see 1500, 1500, and then there are some missing values. Whenever you see the lower numbers in here, that means um, the difference, right, of these two will become the missing values for latitude or longitude, right? So we have to, we'll talk about how to deal with like missing values later, but just notice that you can look at this through df.info quickly, right? DF is our variable that we assign, right? But is the type of this is a pandas data frame. Therefore we can use all these dot shape dot info functions that are you know that exist in pandas. So notice the missing values here and then there's another missing value, right? It's only one missing value literally for year built. And then there are more missing values in here, prior sale uh, date and prior sale amount. Um, so this is how you can quickly look at how many missing values you have, how many, you know, uh, you know, what's the stats for each column. And also notice in here, right, so int 64 object and blah, 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 float. So this is the type. This is telling you the type of um, this column. So ID is an integer. Address is an object, right? Whenever it's object, it's, think of it as a string, right? And then this um, is, uh, you know, city is a object object and zip code is integer latitude longitude is a float right and then you have you know all these um, columns um, so great so that's you know very useful and then the other one is you know describe right and notice that whenever you type it right and then you can just autofill it right so I type it like up to this and then I if I just click on tab it's gonna autofill it and then it's gonna go like this, right? So I will have the statistics for all the numerical values. Remember the numerical values in this data frame. So we'll have ID, zip code, and latitude, all these numerical values. And then you can see the count, right? Number that, um, that are not null, right? And then mean, right? What's the mean of ID, I mean, it doesn't matter that ID is not so, it doesn't really have any meanings for ID, but perhaps for rooms, it has a lot of meanings, right? The average room is really six, right? It tells you that it's six, average bedroom is 2.7, bathroom is 2.1, uh, and then standard deviation, right? And mean, right, like minimum, and then 25 percentile, this is, you know, uh, 25th percentile, and this is median, right? 50th uh, percentile is median and 75 and then maximum. So it's pretty useful that you can actually look at just, you know, with one um, function, you can look at all these, the statistics for each column, right? So that's great. Um, now then let's, you know, we talk about missing values, right? One thing we can do is just fill it with, N uh, with zero. Right, we want to say df is our again data frame dot. So there's another function, um, you know, very convenient function fill na right. So you can again, um, and then when you tab it, if you have more than one matching um, functions, you can just you know it will give you a list, and then you can just click on it, and then you'll get that. So fill na, you can actually choose zero, or you know, literally just like missing. Right, this will actually fill all the missing values with this missing string, right? Or I can just say zero. That's a very easy way of doing this. And I can actually assign this to another DF, right? Call it DF2, right? And then DF2, I fill it with zero. And then I can actually see, right, DF2.info. Uh, Let's look at it and see if we have any, right, you can see that it's actually all filled with zero, therefore there's no missing values that can't for non-null values for each column, it's actually now all 15,000. That's great, right? So um, that's, you know, very convenient. And then, um, but sometimes you don't want to fill it with zero, right? Um, you want to do something like, um, something that's more, mm, more intelligent. So say we want to fill it with, um, mean, right, mean of each column. So this is what you can do. 
So I mean, I already wrote, wrote it down, but it's df dot right. Same thing. Fill in a df dot mean right. So this will actually fill it all the NAs with mean right. So let's call this thing again as df three right. We're gonna assign this to another df that's called df three. I'm gonna look at the stats right of um, you can do info uh, info and then you see that uh, there is actually uh, prior sales that date just because this is the date and then you know it doesn't have the mean right you can't really fill it with the mean um, but that's okay so that we can actually talk about how we want to do this um, to fill this uh, missing value for prior sales day uh, with more intelligence, but for now just remember that you can actually have different ways of filling this and then you always want to check that if the missing values uh, are there or are there significant. I mean for this one I don't think that is so significant except for this prior sale day that uh, is not very very significant. If anything I can just drop anything, right? So there's another way of dealing with um, missing values to just really drop all of the values. So what if I say, you know, df dot drop, you can see that again, drop an A, right? And then one thing I can do is in place, right? In place is true, we'll just say that I don't have to assign this back to a df. So one way is like I'm dropping all the NAs and I assign this back to into our df, meaning I want to overwrite my df. That's one way. Or the other way is I can say drop an A in place, right, is equal to true. So this means I want to overwrite DF with, you know, after dropping all the NAs. So if I, if we do this, right, so we then look at DF again, right, the same thing, info. You can see that it's all dropped, therefore the total counts are now, uh, it's a lot less than the uh, original number, which is 15,000, right? So there are many ways that you can deal with this. Um, a lot of time it's more arts than science. You have to, if you have a lot of domain knowledge, then you'll know what to, you know, what to do when you see a missing value. But um, now you know the basic way of dealing with missing values. So going back to our, what we're trying to do is making data available for analysis. So um, I want to then, you know, talk about outliers because you know we're talking about missing values the next thing I want you to know is you need to be careful about outliers as well so one way of really looking at outliers is you can use Seaborn again SNS is Seaborn library that you can visualize things very quickly right so and then we can just do a box plot simple box plot will tell us right so this is how you can see, okay, I have some outliers for estimate value. So first of all, how you can call a function, uh, a field from a data frame is you can actually do dot estimate, and then you can, of course, fill it out, autofill it, right? So this will give you DF, this entire column of estimated value. Remember, there was a column that's called estimate value in our original data frame. And then we want to only use this field, right? So this is how we can call this field. Or another way of doing this is like this, right? You can put the square parentheses around it and then do like this. It's either way, right? People use this like interchangeably. So I will highly recommend when you have the columns, uh, when you name your columns, you should be careful. You shouldn't have the like, you know, something like this. This wouldn't do, right? Because you have a space. So therefore, I always put under bar if I want a space, right? So that you can use a dot, um, you can use this uh, method to call this, uh, to get to this field, as opposed to, you know, something like this, which is more typing. 